Hello again and welcome to another War of Forty K Imperial Guard Tactics video. Now before we get into today's video, I would like to say a huge thank you to Tom Waring for sending in some amazing pictures of his Calderas 3rd Regiment, the Badgers. Absolutely love the colour scheme for this army. Really, really well done. Love a good sort of brown and tan colour scheme. Reminds me a lot of sort of the chop chip camo from I think it was like the first Gulf War, maybe. Just really cool stuff. Um, and really just cool fluff behind this, the fact that, they're, you know, from a Blood Ravens recruitment world, so of course they've been given some uh, equipment which has probably been uh, borrowed by the Blood Ravens. Who, you know, the Blood Ravens, these guys, you know, wouldn't want them billeted next to me. If I was the, if I was the kind of regiment that was billeted next to them, those Blood Ravens, they, they, never, they always seem to be taking other people's stuff. But this... Guard Regiment looks absolutely fantastic. Really love the flyers, the tanks. Nothing like a good old super heavy. Uh, just a good old Bane Blade. I mean, I know we all know they're terrible, but they still look amazing. So thank you for sending these pictures in, Tom. Uh, if anyone else has got any cool pictures that they want me to use in my videos, please, please, please post them on my Facebook page. There will be a link down in the description below. Now, without further ado, let's get into today's video. And we are going to be looking at commissars lord commissars and regular commissars and what is the best loadout to give these guys so in this series we've already taken a look at sergeants and we've taken a look at officers and now we're going to take a look at commissars now right out the bat i'm going to address the black peaked capped elephant in the room which is that regular commissars are not all that good okay um they're cheap admittedly they're 20 points but they're not all that good i personally think that lord commissars are much better if you're going to take a commissar probably want to take a lord commissar okay um now looking looking at what the old what look looking at these two units the basic commissar if you are going to take one you're better off He's, I mean, he's kind of there to just give a plus one leadership buff. That's what you're taking him for. You know, you could take uh, the regimental standard and put it in a command squad and get a leadership buff there. But then you're not outfitting that command squad with as many special weapons as possible. So if you're looking at a way of just keeping your men hanging around as long as possible, and you just want to do that on the cheap... And you want to have some cheap characters to do that, uh, then I would recommend the basic commissar with zero upgrades because he can take a bolt pistol for the low, low cost of nothing. It's baked into his profile now. Whereas if you want to take some of the other options that are available to commissars, uh, regular commissars that is, like previously in the past, I would have always said take a bolter, that's not going to cost you two points. It's probably not worth it. Okay. Now let's take a look in depth at regular old Lord Commissars. These guys have got a lot of options available to them, and I think they're much, much more flexible. Okay, so first thing out the bat, what do you get with your basic Lord Commissar? Well, amazingly, you get a weapon skill of 2+, plus and a ballistic skill of 2+. plus. Right out of the gate, that indicates that this guy isn't messing around. Now, you are only Strength 3, Toughness 3, Basic Guard profile, but you do have 4 wounds, which is pretty good. You do have three attacks, standard, which is also pretty good. And you get a four plus basic save. So carapace armor, that ain't bad. And you do also get a five plus refractor for shield save, and vulnerable save. So overall, as far as guard characters go, this guy's pretty good. He's got the best ballistic skill and weapon skill you can get on a guard, uh, on a guard character, not including Pask. Okay, um, that opens up a lot of options for him. First things first, if you're taking a Lord Commissar, you're not just going to take, he's a, he's a decent points investment. You, you probably want to get a, a bit more out of him than just a leadership buff. I mean, he's great. He's going to be giving you a, um, he's going to be giving you a plus two leadership buff essentially because he's leadership nine and regular guardsman leadership seven. So that's really good. It means that you have to suffer two additional casualties than if you didn't take a Lord Commissar. So that's that, you know, before morale starts kicking in. So if you've got a regular guard squad, 
you have to lose three, you have to lose four casualties before you even have a chance of failing the leadership test. Okay, so that's really, really good. Um, four, you know, if you take four casualties, you roll a six, then the leadership test triggers, but you have the Lord Commissar there. And so what you would do is you would blow the guy's brains out with summary execution and then you get to re-roll the dice and so you've got a very very low chance of, of failing that test so realistically um yeah you, know, you are more likely. the interesting thing is you are more likely to use the execution ability now as well because of the way the new morale system works in the past it wasn't really worth it because you didn't want to shoot a guy on the chance of uh on the chance that you that you were going to get the same result it just wasn't really worth it whereas now if you fail a leadership test, if you by just you know by, let's say you've only taken three or four four casualties, and you fail that leadership test, um, now the rest of the unit has a chance of running away. So the summer execution ability has actually got more useful. So don't forget about it, guys. Now in term so in terms of loadout, so the Lord's Commissar has given you great leadership buffs. In terms of loadouts, you these guys have to take a power sword. You have no choice in the matter. You have to take a power sword. You might as well factor it into their basic cost. They have to take a bolt pistol, but they get it for the low, low cost of nothing. It is a free bolt pistol. Now, you can swap out that power sword for a power fist. I would strongly consider doing this. I wouldn't dismiss it, is what I'm saying. Um, the reason why I would consider it is because your Law Commissar hits on a 2 plus, okay, in combat. Which when he swings that power fist, even though he's got a minus one to hit, he still hits on a 3 plus. No other guard character can boast that. Company commanders, platoon commanders, they will be hitting on fours of the power fist. It's just not really worth it. If you've got a Lord Commissar with a power fist and he's being accompanied by a priest, for example, and he's going to get four attacks with a power fist. That's nothing to be sneered at. Okay? Especially with the new weapon change buffs that have been handed out. Power fists now are, I believe, a flat damage too. Every single one of those power fist swings that goes through is going to knock the block off a Primaris Marine. That's not to be underestimated. Now, I know some of you will be saying, but Morning Glory. You don't want your characters to be in combat, right? Because they could be giving up assassination points. Well, slightly different with Lord Commissars than it is for normal characters. All right. Normal characters, by normal characters, I mean your officers and you know, your astropaths and your psychers. Those guys typically can do their main job from a distance. So officers have access to Vox casters. I am starting to think that Vox Gatters, especially with the new Assassinate rules, that Vox Gatters are actually useful now. There's been a few times when I, I, it's been close. I haven't necessarily lost the character, but I've had to be a bit gamey to, to wrap and bubble wrap my characters. And I would, if I just had a Vox Caster, the whole situation would be much easier. Astropaths and other Psychers tend to have a good range of those Psychic powers. So they don't, or things like Astro Divination, they don't need to be up close and personal. Lord Commissars can't do that. They have to be within six inch range of uh, of the people that they want to buff. They can't change it. I think there might be a warlord trait that lets you change it, but by and large, they can't change it. So you need to be within six inches, okay? Unless I think you're a minute time to pass and you can use that one CP order that makes you auto pass on a 24 inch range from a Lord Commissar. But <laughs> that's for minute time to pass. We're talking about regular guard here. Um, now with your Lord Commissar, that means he's got to be up close and personal. That means there's a chance he is going to have to get, you know, he's going to have to get up close, he's going to have to get in the thick of it. Um, when that happens, you don't want to be giving away assassinate really easily. And the easiest way of giving up assassinate is not being able to fight your way out of that combat. Um, so having a Lord Commissar with a power fist means that your opponent can't just send in a basic bitch character to deal with him because if there's a very good chance that your Lord Commissar will, uh, if he does survive, will do serious damage back to whatever attacked him. So it's it's good for playing mind games, good for the old voodoo, putting the voodoo into the enemy 
Uh, and it's also a good way of mean of, 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 if your comma size is going to be up close and personal, it, it means you, you're going to get some good efficiency out of him. Also, Lord Commissar leadership buffs there. Lord Commissar, if your opponent doesn't take assassinate, are way more disposable than guard officers. Leadership buffs are nice, but they're not the be-all and end-all. Losing an officer and losing access to orders is really bad, but losing access to a Lord Commissar isn't the end of the world. It's an inconvenience. Um... I mean, don't tell the Lord Commissars that though. <laughs> they they wouldn't consider that. They wouldn't consider themselves an inconvenience. Um, so yeah, that's why you should you know out of the two melee options you have available: power sword and power fist. Absolutely fine to just stick with the power sword. It's not mandatory to take the power fist in any way, shape, or form. What I'm saying is consider it. It is an equally valid choice to the power sword. If you're playing a two thousand point game or maybe even larger. Nah, let's, not even, let's not consider that. 2,000 points is the tournament standard at the moment. If you're playing a 2,000 point game, it's worth considering a power fist new Lord Commissar. Okay. Now, what about the shooting options that this Bozo has available? Well, he has a bolt pistol, which is free. Unless you're taking him bare bones to save points, this is a terrible option. Okay. Uh, you're not... It, the bolt pistol won't do very much. Unless you're taking it for fluff reasons, it's just not going to do very much. And... Um, the bolter is, is better in every single way. At a bare minimum, I would consider giving your Lord Commissar a bolter. Okay, if you, if you keep him with a power sword, give him a bolter. Okay, it, he will hit on twos with it, which means if you get him up, he's going to be up close and personal. He's going to be buffing the mid-range squads that are holding the objectives. Ninth edition is all about taking the mid middle of the board. You, everyone has a bit of a monster mash in the middle, so this means that the Lord Commissar will be in double tap range with his bolter. Probably from turn two onwards. Um, that means he's going to be getting two shots. Means every turn you're almost guaranteed to hit with both bolter shots into the enemy. All the Lord Commissar has to do is kill a couple. You know, it's, it's kill an intercessor, and he's made half of it, half his points back. If he makes half his points back in a game, he's done half of what he was there to do, because the other half is he's there to buff and give you leadership stuff. Okay. The other thing I would strongly consider with your Lord Commissar is giving him a plasma pistol. That's the, that's the other option. He's got a bolt pistol, bolter, and plasma. They're the options he has available. Plasma pistol, uh, you probably don't want to overcharge it because you roll it when he dies. But at the end of the day, if you're in a pinch, you really need to do that damage too. That's so you've got one Premier Marine sat on objective, and if you kill him, you win the game. Then you could overcharge your Lord Commissar and not worry about it because if he dies then whatever he's not giving you extra orders it's not the end of the world and guess what he hits on a 2 plus hitting on a 2 plus with plasma in the guard is not it's not common there are certain regiments that can do it but it's not common 2 plus plasma pistol is nothing to be sneered at he can jump out the back of a Valkyrie he can jump out of a uh, out of a Chimera he can outflank into range with it I wouldn't, I'm not suggesting that you go around overcharging all your commissars plasma pistols. It's probably not a good idea. But uh, it is something to consider. At the very least, you spend five points on the plasma pistol. Your Lord Commissar, who, as we've established, is going to be in the middle of the field. He's going to be getting shots off with that weapon. He only has to shoot. You know, he, he, he'll be shooting that every turn, even if it's just strength seven, AP minus three, one damage. So you don't even overcharge it. It's still a really good way of getting that Lord Commissar to to do damage and to take advantage of what you're paying for which is you know, half of what you're paying for is the is the stat line on this guy so really really good now you could you could just run around throwing crap grenades with the lord commissar okay don't forget i believe that lord commissar is one of the few units in the game that come with crack grenades in, a, in the guard game, I should say, that come with crack grenades. <laughs> Obviously, every Marine comes with crack grenades. They're saying, yeah, that's, it's one of the few guard units that come with crack grenades, RIP Creed. And so what you can do is if you think you're going to be up close and personal, bashing people with the power fist and stuff, you don't really need to take the power fist pistol. You can just be chucking crack grenades at people. So there we go. I know some people will be very hesitant about throwing their officers into combat. I don't often do it, but that, and then again, I run an infantry army and most people take assassinate against me. Um, but 
Law Commerce Stars, what you can do with them is you can take a big unit of conscripts and you can sort of sit the Lord Commissar in the middle of this blob, right? And you can when you can you can charge the conscripts forward but leave a channel for the Lord Commissar to charge as well. The conscripts will go in first, eat any potential overwatch. The Lord Commissar will then go in. And then when the combat's finished, either few models will be able to strike the Lord Commissar or when you get to pile in and then consolidate and finish the enemy off um your law commissar will your conscripts will consolidate forward before your law commissar and that means that they'll be able to bubble wrap them again so there are ways of being able to combat with guard characters without exposing them to being destroyed conscripts are really good at that we're not going to get into conscripts here because everyone who's watched this channel for a long time knows that i have a sordid love affair with conscripts but um Conscripts are really good in 9th edition, guys. Do not underestimate them. Big blobs of infantry. Love the new morale mechanic. And they are, yeah. And you can make them fierce pretty easily several other ways as well. So there we go. Right. Let's leave it there then. To sum up. If you're taking a, a regular Commissar, keep him cheap. He hasn't got the stat line to be worth really investing in. He's just there to give you a little leadership buff. And to maybe raise a banner. That's a good way of looking at it. He's the cheapest, he's the cheapest way of raising a banner. Is a, is a basic commissar. Cheapest way of raising a banner. Maybe, yeah. I think even platoon commanders are more expensive than him now. So, if you want to have a unit that can just raise banners for dirt, dirt cheap. And is a character. And can set an objective for dirt, dirt cheap. And is a character. Your basic commissar is not bad. But don't give many upgrades. If you want to take a lord commissar. Two ways I would run it. Bolter and Power Sword, or Bolter and, or or Plasma Pistol and Power Sword, or just Power Fist. Yeah, I wouldn't go Plasma Pistol and Power Fist. That's starting to get really expensive. But just Power Fist and keep him with the Bolt Pistol at that point because he's going to be you know the whole point is he's going to try and be in combat there, isn't he? So there you go, guys. Let me know what you think. Uh, one thing that I probably should mention before I forget, many people will be saying, why would you even take Lord Commissars? Okay, it's a great question. I like Lord Commissars because I've actually found them to be really good buffing units. If you're taking a diehard competitive guard list, number one, these days you're probably looking at an infantry list, not a mech list, okay? And in that infantry list, you're probably going to be running two battalions, at least. Uh, and if you want to fill those two battalions out, you're going to have to take three company commanders, but you need another HQ choice. You could take a Primary Psyker, not a bad choice, but I would take the Lord Commissar instead. Uh, the Primary Psyker is good, but he's, he's, he's pretty expensive. And, um, well, it's a tough one, isn't it? Um, the Primary see, I don't like Primary Psykers because I would rather take... Astropaths, and in a competitive guard army, you're going to be taking astropaths anyway. So that's why I wouldn't I wouldn't take the Primary Psyche. He's an expensive astropath. I'd rather take a Lord Commissar and give myself some leadership chance, you know, chance of leadership phase. I mean, to be honest, if I was running a pure infantry army, I would take three company commanders and then probably two Lord Commissars, even though I don't need to for minimum requirements. I would rather take two Lord Commissars and give myself a lot of leadership bubbles for my army, maybe even three. Though, but I really, I really think law comes out really useful. But then you start, but then you start getting a bit more expensive points wise. So there you go, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Uh, if you've, anyone's got any other cool ideas uh, for how to run your law commissars and regular commissars, if you think I've missed something on the regular commissar and that there's actually a good way of running him, please let me know down in the comment section below. I'm always open to hearing new ideas. Thank you for watching, and of course, I'll see you guys next time.